Hey, I'm Eric Blake. I'm a boat builder at Brooklyn Boatyard. Years ago, good friends and I started Off Center Harbor to bring you inside the world of classic boats, bring you inside places like this. Uh, if you like the video, there's hundreds more. Just follow the link in the description below. No matter where we travel in the world, we hear the same consistent yearning for a well-designed dinghy that can realistically replace the ubiquitous but unrollable inflatable rib. If she looked good, rode and towed well, and was extremely stable, that might be enough, we hear. But wouldn't it be nice if she sailed well, too, they always add. When we first saw this new design from Doug Hyland, we knew we had a winner. Doug's formal name for the design is Una, after a clever mythological giant who can hold her own in tough situations. But as a real rib alternative, we've already given this head turner the nickname Arriba. With a new 18 part video series showing how to build this boat, and with plans and CNC cut kits now available for this design worldwide, let's hear straight from the designer about this wonderful new boat. I started thinking about this design as a method to wean people away from their rigid bottom inflatables, or inflatables in general. Um, seems like more and more people go to those boats, and in some, a lot of cases with good reason. They have uh, tremendous stability. They also have uh, tremendous uh, fendering, you know, they're one big bumper. Um, the problem with them is that you cannot row them to save your soul. And the other disadvantage is they don't have a low speed sweet spot at all. So this boat is an attempt to try to give a person good features of an inflatable and some of the good features of a traditional boat as well. Una has a lot of beam and fairly hard bilges to give her the stability she needs when you step aboard and how it tips or stay put and steady, those define your feelings of comfort in that boat from that point on. In spite of her beam, this boat will row pretty well. If you've ever rowed an inflatable, this will seem like a rowing shell in comparison. And also she'll sail well. One of the requirements for good sailing is stability and beam gives good stability, especially in a lot of wind. Um, she has a dagger board that takes up a little bit less room than a, a center board. Um, the mast steps through this forward seat compartment here. In designing a small boat rig, a dinghy rig like this, uh, one of the most important things is that all the spars actually fit inside the boat where they can be properly stowed. So that has some limitations on what rigs are available, and they tend to be, usually for boats like this, either a sprit rig or a lug rig. For this design, I've used a, a balanced lug rig. The lug rig has the advantage that it's easy and quick to drop the sail. If that thunderstorm comes over the horizon, the wind picks up suddenly, you can stay low in the boat, and get the sail down and under control easily without having to stand up. My general philosophy is that you want not so much sail that you would worry about your kits being out there sailing around in the harbor in the, in the evening. This design uses glued lapstrip plywood construction, which has turned out to be a wonderful construction method from several points of view. It's low in maintenance, it's very stiff, pretty light, and so, especially for amateur builders, it allows you to make an individual, handsome boat with materials that you can get um, readily and come up with a good product without having a lot of mold building or any of that sort of thing. It has about the same footprint as a rib, but on a rib, you, you know, your pontoons would come along like this and extend actually beyond the motor. So in a rib, you really only have this much interior room and the motor might be here because generally the pontoons on a rib extend beyond the motor. 
So you can see there's a tremendous amount more room here. There's also really a lot of storage on board this boat. If you want to go for a picnic or keep things like life jackets on board, there's hatches. There's this aft hatch, which is quite large, with flotation compartments on either side. Then under this midship seat, there's also storage, which if you used an electric motor, that's probably where your batteries would want to be. And there's also some more storage up forward here. And then there's flotation compartment up here in the very bottom. There's two rowing stations. One here if the rower is sitting amidships. And another one here if they had another person or two aboard. Four people would not be too much for uh, an afternoon sail in this boat. There's room for them to spread out, especially if a couple of them are kids. The Coast Guard is interested in rowing boats, small boats of this size, and outboard motor boats under 20 feet because that's where statistically most of boating accidents and fatalities occur. So I spent a lot of time on this design working on flotation, on calculations for what the Coast Guard calls safe powering, um, on what the Coast Guard calls safe loading, uh, so I've done the calculations and if you build a boat exactly like this it should pass the Coast Guard muster and, and be able to pass all their tests. As you can see, Luna's a big beanie boat that would be not just good as a tender but make a pretty nice family boat too. She's wide enough and she has enough substance to her to feel safe having kids out tooting around the harbor while you enjoy a drink in the cockpit. Thanks for watching this video. 